Today we're going to be building with GPT-4's API. We will have streaming responses, both in Terminal and with Streamlit, in a nice little user interface. We will be implementing a chat history with max memory tokens, so we can keep track of the chat history without running over the token context limit of the API. We will also be building two Gradio interfaces, one just question answer, still with the chat history, and token limitation being taken into consideration. Also, again, with Gradio, but this time in a chat format, as you see, the user and the assistant keeps on talking. This is nice. We will also learn about how to stream to the terminal. As you see, we are keeping track of the tokens. This is wonderful. We will also build a HTML, JavaScript, CSS frontend using FS API Python backend. This is going to be a web app. This is going to be in a chat format, no streaming responses, but nevertheless using GPT-4 with conversation history. I will also be providing two different styles, CSS styling for this chatbot. We will overview the code in Visual Studio Code for each one of these examples, but I will be offering the code for download for my Patreon supporters. The link will be in the description. So let's begin with the printing in the terminal with the most basic example. Let's review how we introduce token limitations and a chat history. Requirement for this particular main.py file is just OpenAI and Tick token, but we're going to need along the way Streamlit, Gradio, Fast API. I've just put all the requirements in a text file. These are the requirements. This will be available to Patreon supporters as well. But uh, let's begin. We are importing OpenAI, we are importing Sys, and we are importing Tick token. You have to install, pip install OpenAI and Tick token. Tick token. You also have to define your API key in your user environment. Variables is the best way. I've already done that. Otherwise, you can define it in the code right here. This is not recommended. It's best to keep it a secret in your user environment variables. Just do a quick Google search on how to do that. Then we are defining a function to count tokens because the tick token uses this syntax for encoding. We are using for the GPT 3.5 Turbo. You could have used the GPT 4, I believe. I haven't tested it. Anyway, and then we are returning the length of that list, which returns us the amount of tokens. So this is how we are counting the tokens with this function. Then we are setting a maximum token limit. Here I've set a really low amount so that we can see it in action. Uh, anyway, you can change this to whatever you like. The GPT-4's context limit is 8,000 something, 8,100 something anyway. Then we initialize our conversation history with the system message because we always want to keep the system message. This is just the default system message. Feel free to change it. Then we are initiating a while loop because we want to be able to keep querying the large language model. Feel free to modify any one of this code as you like. We are using the Python's input to get a chat input. Then I was trying to implement the printing of the chat history, but I actually skipped that step, but you know, I just commented it out here, but you can play around with it if you like. Then we are appending the user input to the conversation history with the data pen role as user content as chat input. Then we are calculating the total tokens in the conversation history as such as this. We are using this function we have defined up here, count tokens, just like this. And then we are printing the total, the total tokens before removal. Okay, so because we are going to do a check right after that. Let me do it like this. We are with a while loop, we are checking always if we exceed the max memory tokens, which we have specified, then we are making sure that our chat history have some content in it because we always want to keep the system message in there. And then we say remove message. We pop the first element because we don't want to pop the zeroth element because that is the system message. Then we adjust total tokens is what we have removed. So we are keeping track of the total tokens in a running fashion. Otherwise, we break. If this fails, we want to break. This never happened to me, but just in case, maybe you can implement a different strategy here. Then I am printing the total tokens after removal. This only initiates if this condition is met. Then we are making an API called OpenAI with the conversation history, and we are using streaming responses. As you see, a response equals to OpenAI's chat completion, GPT-4, or you can use GPT-3.5 Turbo with this implementation as well. Messages is going to come from conversation history because we want to send the entire conversation. Streaming is true. And then we are printing about the sender requests and printing have the response because 
Lately, in these days when I'm making the video, API had been pretty slow, so this was my way of checking if this is working all right. Anyway, and then we process the response from API. Response will come to us as a particular object. So we look for the chunk in response, we do a loop. We make sure that if role is in the chunk, we continue because the first element can be the role of the assistant, because since this is streaming, we skip that because we are only looking for the content. Then we are looking for the content in chunk choices, the zeroth element of the delta. Then we are response text is that is the content of that. Then we are appending to the conversation history, exactly that text. And we are writing with the system STD out, write our text, and then we are flushing it. And then to create a new line right after the responses, we are doing a print. So let's see this in action. When we run this, we're going to be greeted with an input box. We're going, I'm going to say, hi, my name is Memo. And then we see that total tokens before removal is 12. About the send request, we have the response and we print, hello, Memo, how can I assist you? If I say, what is my name? Then we get the response, your name is Memo. So it remembers, we are keeping track of the conversation. If I say, tell me a joke, we say tokens before removal, 50. So we are about to hit the limit. I'm going to ask for another joke. And then as you see, we are removing the tokens down to below 50. And then after that, I'm going to ask, what is my name again? And then it had forgotten that as an AI language model. So this happened because we have set our mixed memory tokens to 50. But feel free to change it. You can set it to 500, 5,000, whatever you like. Just make sure that you are still within the context limit, which is 8,000 at all times if you were to set this to 10,000 for example it's not going to work now let's look at the streamlit implementation we have to pip install streamlit obviously again everything else remains the same except when we are initiating conversation history we are initiating it into st.session state conversation history key the reason is because streamlit when you run a streamlit user interface every time you make an action on the streamlit's web interface then it reruns the script all over again so if you don't store the conversation history in a session state key, as we're doing right here, then it will always be cleared. So you won't be able to keep track of the history. So the one way around that with Streamlit is to use the session states. Okay. Essentially, we are defining a chatbot response right here, a function. And we are appending the input to the user's conversation by calling the conversation history from session state and appending it just like we did earlier, but this time just using the ST functionality. Now we are calculating the total tokens again the same way, but from the session state conversation history key. And we are removing the tokens exactly the same. We're just using the session state from Gimlet. Again, the same messages. We are using the session state. And then we are initiating the assistance response as an empty list for chunk and response. We are doing the exact same process we talked about a little bit ago. Then we are doing a place order under underscore response at markdown. We are printing the assistance response. And then we are appending the assistance response to the conversation history, to the session state conversation history key. Then we are initiating <coughs> the Streamlit app with the title chatbot, user input being uh, sd.takes input, and response button being sd.button, placeholder response. We're setting it to empty. And then we should check if response button is clicked. Then we activate the function. Let's see this in action. To run the Streamlit app, from our working directory, we do streamlit, streamlit run main underscore st.py. That's the name of our um, the name of our file. Make sure to run it from your command prompt to initiate your command prompt. You click on this arrow and go into this command prompt. Make sure you are in the right environment. I use Miniconda to set my environments. Anyway, this will suffice for me. When we run this command, and streamlit will initiate. And make sure you are in the right directory as well. I was in the wrong directory. And finally, when we run this, we get a uh, we get a URL from our terminal and also the automatically our interface launches. So now we can talk to our GPT-4. Let's ask it a question. As you see, we are having streaming responses. This is really lovely. You feel free to use this as a stepping stone, build your own projects. Streamlit. I have many other videos on Streamlit. Please take a look at some of my other videos. I hope you're enjoying this. Now on to the Gradio implementation. We are importing Gradio as GR. You have to pip install this. Everything about this code is exactly the same. I'm just going to scroll. Except when we define our chatbot, we're defining chat input. That's also the same. There's nothing about Gradio so far because Gradio is wonderful and just taking in a function 
and then and knowing exactly what the inputs and outputs are. So then we are initiating an interface equals to gr.interface. Function is the chatbot, which we are defining right here. That's it. And then we are defining the inputs as gr.inputs text box. Label you, outputs, conversation. Gradio is able to figure this out exactly from return and the input, which we have specified right here, the chat input. After that, a title and quick description. I'm not sure what this is, but you can look into it in its documentation. And we say iface.launch. We just simply run this. We just simply run this and it will launch in our local browser. You can just control click this. And now you have the interface. It takes a moment for Gradio to return. Here we go. This is not streaming responses with Gradio. So depending on how long GPT-4 will return a response, then you might have to wait for a moment. In this case, in this case it took, took a minute. And we are actually, we have started the chat format interface. So as you see, we are actually seeing it in a chat format. GPT-4 is slow, so the wait time might be quite high, but anyway, this is how you can implement something like this. I just want to say for the Gradio's chat interface, I forgot to mention that we are formatting the conversation for message and conversation history. Formatted conversation takes in these, okay, in this way, fashion, and returns the formatted conversation. This is for the chat format for Gradio. I apologize that I thought I was actually doing the main underscore GR implementation. So actually, let's move on to that and see what the difference is. As you see in this GR, Regular question answer implementation, we don't have a formatting. Everything else is exactly the same. If we go back, see, we just have a formatted conversation right here. And this is being returned from our function chatbot. And in the main.gr, main underscore gr, it's the exact same. It's just we are just returning the assistance response in, in this case. If you run this, it's going to be very similar to the one from before. But this time with the question answering, we are, we are just doing question and answers. I would say, just tell me a joke. As you'll see, we are just getting a single response. So this is a nice little, so I'm providing radio interfaces. Main.gr is question answering, main, main underscore gr, main underscore chat is a chat-like format, okay? Now let's talk about our front and back end JavaScript interface. I have this in a separate folder called web app. I have my static folder with app.js and styles.css. These designs is other designs which you can use to update your styles.css, for example, for dark mode. Here's our, we're going to take a look at these. Templates folder under web app includes our index.html. This is where we're telling it where to look for our styles and app.js and our main.py file with our fast API. So let's just quickly review what's going on here. First of all, you need the additional requirements for this, such as fast API, fast API, Uvicorn, AIO files, Jinja 2, and Python dash multipart. If we start with our backend, we are make sure I'm in the right file. We are importing quite a lot of stuff from fast API. Okay, these are necessary. We are importing cores middleware to bypass Chrome's browser some secure security features. We are importing static files, HTML response. We do have to pip install Jinja. And we are importing Jinja to templates. You can read more about it. We are importing dict from typing. We are assigning our app to be fast API. And then we are mounting our static files, such as this app.mount. We are specifying our directory because our app.js and style.css is our static files. Template is the Jinja 2 templates directory. This is going to serve our index.html. Again, you have to define your OpenAI API key. We are implementing the course middleware to allow all origins so we don't run into errors, especially with Chrome. We are defining conversation history as we've done before, makes memory tokens as before. And we are defining a root function to render index.html with the app.get decorator at this path. We are defining with async such as this with the request and we are returning the template response index.html. And we know we can do this because we have defined the templates right here with Jinja 2. Continuing, we are creating the chat function to handle the chat request with this decorator at slash API slash chat path. We are defining chat endpoints with async with these parameters. User message is the user message which will which we will receive from the front end. If not user message, we are just checking. They saying that user message is required. For example, if the user text input box is empty, and we are appending that to our conversation history. 
And now we are doing a call to OpenAI from GPT-4 to get a response. This is not, we're not going to use streaming responses in this, but I've uh, made a different video on that. I'll put in the link in the description, or you can just look at my channel. The system message is the response. You have to extract it like this from the object that is returned from OpenAI. We are appending it to the conversation history, assistance message as well. And now we are doing that check to make sure we are within our memory limitations. When we are in this implementation, we are just using the total tokens used because that is being returned to us. If you're not if you're not using streaming true, then you can actually take a look at the total tokens. Anyway, and then we are doing the exact same thing, removing excess conversation history from the earlier part of the conversation. And then after that, if that's the case, if you do end up removing some messages, then we are doing an additional response call to, because, because we have to make sure that we stay within the limitations of the token context. Otherwise, we break and then we return the assistance message. And then I don't believe this is necessary because we're going to be running it manually, the Eurocoin server. Anyway, let's take a look at our index.html. This is just pretty straightforward. We have some divs with chat container class, uh, chat output, chat form. Okay. It will be available uh, for download for Patreon supporters. And the styling is as such. I will scroll slowly. But this will be available for download. You can write your own CSS styling too, if you wish. And finally, the front end, we are calling from the DOM, the chat form, the chat input, chat output. We are retrieving them from our index.html, as you see from here, from the client, by the IDs we have specified. Then we are doing an event listener for the submit button with an ASIC event. And then we are getting the user's message. We are adding the user's message to the output right here. And we are sending the user's message to the API chat endpoint right here, which is which will which is in our backend, which will receive that response, which the user has put in the web app UI, and then send it back to the backend so that the backend can send it to OpenAI for to get a completion and then send it back to the back to the front end. So we're getting the assistance response here. There is the response.json, and then we are getting the data from that. And then here we are, we have to add this to the to our web app user interface with this function, add message output, which we are actually using right here. As you can see, we are defining a variable and then we are creating a new div. We are giving it a class name, we are giving it the context, which is the message that is returned, and then we are appending it. And then we are scrolling to the top because obviously each new message is going to appear at the top. So this is it. This is really it. And to run this, we have to start a terminal. Make sure you have a command prompt. Make sure you are in the right directory. I just entered the web app directory. And then we run uvicorn main. This is the name of your main file, the server file, main.py equals app because app we have defined in our code right here is fast API. And then dash dash reload so that Whenever we make a change to our main.py file and save it, our browser will update, our server will restart. When we run this, we'll see that the corn is running on this URL. You can control click it and the interface will pop out in your browser. This is running locally. You can just start talking to it right away. So this styling is not very pretty, but you can change the color of it. This is it. So I have a four implementation for you guys, for you all. So to wrap this up, we have a main.py file, which we can use to print in the terminal. It has a chat history and also removes earlier messages from the chat history to keep the token count appropriate for the for GPT-4. We have a, a Streamlit app. We have a Gradio app, which does QA. And we have a, a chat-like user interface for Gradio. Along with under the web app folder, we have the HTML, CSS, Python, JavaScript full web app. Like I said, these, all these files will be available for my Patreon supporters for download. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you.